Hello. Uh, we call our species Homo sapien. That means wise man. Uh, that's a pretty good definition for our species, but Homo fictus, uh, fiction man, story man, that's about equally accurate. Man is a storytelling animal. Let me give you a sense for what I'm talking about. It's the 1940s, these two psychologists create this extremely short, crude, famous film. They show it to 120 people. You're watching it right now. At the end, they ask the research subjects a very simple question. Please tell us what you saw. I'm going to shut up now. We're going to try to replicate this experiment. At the end, I'm going to ask you that same question. What did you see? It's about one minute longer in this film. Okay, so let's see if we can replicate this experiment now. So the first question I want to ask you guys, and I'll just ask for a show of hands, who sees a story of some type here? Like, can you, can you, can you put your hands up if you, if you do? Just about everybody. That's a, that's a pretty uh, common uh, response. I'm looking for a volunteer or two who will give me a very short, encapsulated one or two sentence uh, on what story you saw. Is anybody willing to do that? Uh, I see a hand there, yeah? Hansel you see Hansel and Gretel? Okay, another hand. What do you see? I heard a sound? Yeah? Me? Oh, yes. Parenting. Parenting? Parenting? Okay, you? I saw a similar pattern. What? Anybody see a love triangle? Okay, a lot of people see a love triangle. Okay, so we could go on forever with this. People see a lot of different stories. There's no reason to go on. We've, we've already successfully replicated the experiment. In the original, 120 people see this little film. Only three of them give a truly reasonable, rational, logical response. What did I see? I saw triangles, circles, moving around. That's all I saw. I saw geometry. Everyone else makes up a little romance, a little epic, a little love triangle, a little tragedy. And this is a beautiful, powerful experiment because it reveals us very quickly as natural creators of stories, natural interpreters of stories. It's not just that all of us here are capable of taking those raw, crude, geometrical cues and transfiguring them into a confident story. It's that most of us can't not do it. We do it automatically, we do it by reflex, we do it without even trying. It is how your brains work as storytelling animals. And it's important and beautiful that we're not all seeing the same story. If we're all seeing the same story, it means nothing. It means we're good at digesting a narrative these guys are feeding us. The fact that we're all seeing different stories, or at least there's a diversity of stories, means that when you watch this, you're not consuming fiction. You're not experiencing a story. You're the one who is fabricating the story. You're making up the fiction yourself. And again, automatically, reflexively, without even trying, it's how your brain works as a storytelling animal. It has been this way for people, for as long as people have been people. Uh, back one slide, please. This image, one of my favorites, probably my favorite photograph in the world. Life magazine, 1947, these are Kung San Bushmen. This image is called The Storyteller. And there he is at the center of his screen. He's the guy with his hands up. He looks like he's uh, a conductor. And that's appropriate because he is literally orchestrating every thought in their head. He's orchestrating all of the feelings in their hearts. Look how he's brought his people together, their skin up against skin, mind up against mind. He's brought them into neurological rhythm with each other. He's brought them into emotional attunement with each other. If they had the proper scientific instruments, they would be able to demonstrate that with that group of people. He is simply wielding enormous power, and he's doing so only with the most basic human toolkit. This ancient power of storytelling is, of course, 
still available to us today, just massively amplified by our technology. So if you think about it, a great storyteller, a great one, is like a witch. Her pen is a wand, she waves it over the paper, and she casts a spell. The spell allows her to bust in to your brain and change how you feel, which allows her to change how you think, which can change how you act. That is the received view of the value and power of storytelling. And it's exactly what psychologists and other scientists are now finding in the lab. I have time to tell you about one experiment that shows how this works at a brain level. So there's a scientist named Paul Zak. He brings his students, research subjects, student research subjects, into his lab, pays them 20 bucks. They read a sad, compelling, non-fictional story about a dying little boy and his distraught father. Zak takes a little blood before they read. He takes a little blood after they read. And at the end, after they walk out of the lab, the students have the opportunity, if they so choose, to donate some or all of that money they earned back to a charity that serves sick kids. The results of the study. After reading the story, oxytocin levels in the blood spike. Oxytocin has been called the empathy chemical. And the more oxytocin there was in the blood, the more these cash-strapped, empathy-drunk students donate back to that charity that serves sick kids. On average, they give back half of their pay. I think that's pretty impressive. So it's a cool experiment because it suggests that stories change our behaviors by actually changing our brain chemistry. And this is the rub. This is the cool part of the whole thing for me. Zach stresses, as do I, that none of this good stuff happens if you just throw the information about the sick kid at the students with bullet points. It has to be presented in a classical story structure. If it's not in a story structure, you get none of that uh, chemical change in the brain. You don't get the eruption of empathy, and you don't get the behavior change, which consists of people uh, giving money to a good cause. You get none of that good stuff unless you tap into the power story has, the unique power story has, to rivet human attention, to rouse us emotionally, and to change our hearts and our minds. So let's go to the next slide. Go past all this. There we go. So I think the thing to remember as we all, all of us are charging forward into this brave new digital world is that the storyteller and the astronaut are in no way at odds. Of course, the caveman is an astronaut. Yes, the technology changes. It changes a lot from oral tales to clay tablets and medieval manuscripts and printed books. Then we have films, we have TV, Kindles, iPhones, and all the way up now to virtual reality. But human nature doesn't change. And so we are what we were and what we always will be. We're storytelling animals. We are creatures who evolved to thrill to stories, to be moved by them and to be changed by them. So I think the thing for us to remember is that the fastest way to touch a single human mind or to change the whole world still begins with four magical words, and they are once upon a time. Uh, so that's it for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.